You're listening to 50 Pirates in 50 Days on the Sports Objective Podcast. A new era of East Carolina football is here and will begin on August 31st when Mike Houston leads the Pirates into action at NC State. Between now and then, join us for a daily trip down memory lane as we experience Pirate football through the words of the men who made those memorable moments happen. Here's your host, Bubba Rosenbaum. Welcome into the Sports Objective Podcast. Our 50 Pirates and 50 Day series rolls on, and today we're catching up with the uh, offensive lineman, um, regular starter at guard under the Skip Holtz regime. And welcome into the show, Corey Dallas. Hey, I appreciate it. It's uh, good to be on the here show with you. Absolutely, Corey. We appreciate your time. Uh, a lot of great memories from your time as a Pirate. A couple of championships, which we'll get to in a, here in just a little bit. Uh, but uh, let's start off. I know you were from kind of the uh, central to western part of the state. Uh, there in Ashburn, North Carolina, or maybe just a little east of Ashburn, Eastern Randolph High School. So talk about your path to ECU. Yeah, I'm from around Ashburn. It's actually a little town called Franklinville, but shoot, I don't, I ain't met anybody yet that know where that is if I say it. So, <laughs> um, but yeah, we uh, well, was actually a pretty good um, high school team here, and you know we had, see, I think my time in high school we lost probably four or five games total you know, over four years. But um, it's about dead center in the state. But like a lot of East Carolina guys, I mean, I'm just a, you know, just kind of a local guy that ended up going down there and. Actually, out of high school, I was, at the time, I'd verbally committed to West Point, um, and I had a trip there and planned to sign on my trip, and then uh, ended up, you know, deciding, talking to ECU, that I'd at least go down there the week beforehand and, you know, take a look at ECU, and honestly, at the time in my mind, I thought it was kind of a, just a free trip to at least check it out, um, but I got down there for my official visit. You know, from talking to those guys with, you know, Coach Shankweiler and a lot of the other staff, um, and especially, you know, getting to spend the day and with all the players that were down there then, um, honestly changed my mind. I ended up canceling my trip the next weekend and, you know, decided to go to East Carolina. Now, Corey, during your time at ECU, obviously, you know, so your, your position coach for the majority of your career was Steve Shankweiler, but um, was it Rick Smith that recruited your area? Yeah, it was it was Rick Smith that I was recruited by, um, and I mean, you know, honestly, him and and all those guys that was that was honestly, in my opinion, what kind of changed when Holtz turned things around was just you know the the type of guys we got on the team were a lot better. Um, I think they did a much better job targeting you know in state guys as well. Yeah, no, no doubt about it. Um, Coach Smith is undoubtedly a straight shooter, and I know that had to be uh, nice as a recruit. I mean, you, you knew, uh, or maybe not necessarily at the time, but uh, once you got to ECU, you realized exactly who Coach Smith was and that you could uh, take his word to the bank. Yeah, absolutely. It's kind of funny looking back, too, because I, I, I was one of the quietest guys you ever met You know, coming out of high school. I didn't talk hardly at all. Um, and, you know, the, I actually coached, you know, for about four years at Methodist University. And kind of looking back at, you know, him recruiting me, I'm kind of like, man, I was probably the worst type of recruit to have. <laughs> I mean, you know, he, he probably couldn't have told you what decision I was going to make um, just because I was so quiet back then. Yeah, that's funny. Um, so coming into East Carolina, that's what, and that was the second year of the Skip Holtz era, and the, the program had shown a lot of progress in year one and winning five games after just winning a combined three games in 2003 and four. Uh, so um, after nearly making a bowl in year one, um, you're coming in. Talk about the opportunity to, um, to start. I think you started, what, eight out of the ten games in which you played your true freshman season in 2006. Yeah, yeah, I did, and uh, see, well, that's that's what's even even weirder to an extent is when I was recruited, you know, I committed to East Carolina, but it was kind of late in the process. Um, they'd actually planned the gray shirt me and bring me in the following year, and then probably about two weeks before, you know, that class was going to come in, I got a call from Coach Smith, and, you know, he was like, hey, we, we need you in here now. <laughs> so I kind of ended up, you know, jumping right into things that summer and, you know, did pretty decent in camp and you know kind of worked my way up and yeah it was the uh 
I think it was the third or fourth game that year. Ended up starting. Um, it was actually against Virginia. Um, I don't know if you remember that was. Uh, oh God, that was Chris Long's senior year. Yeah, I do. Uh, I do. I do remember that game. <laughs> What, and what was crazy is uh, they played like a three down front back then, and you know I guess they saw they had a new true freshman starting in there, and they flipped their whole defensive front that game and just put him on me the whole game. And I'll tell you what, I'm I'm glad we had uh, James Pinkney back there that could run. <laughs> yeah, that game is funny, and when you when you think about UVA during those years, they were pretty mediocre at best. But Al Groves certainly had them looking the part. I know in the in a uniform, uh, they um, they definitely looked like they had a lot of future NFL talent. Uh, how much of, or how many of those guys? Uh, excuse me, I should say um, went on to the NFL. I'm not sure, but uh, but I, I, that, I think that was the biggest thing that I recalled about those UVA teams: how much they looked the part. <laughs> yeah, yeah, they were. I mean, they were absolutely gigantic. I mean, I you know. That same year, they had their other defensive end. I mean, this dude was like six eight and just all muscle. I mean, it was crazy. But um, yeah, and I mean, honestly, I think they were a little better team than their record showed too. But you know, obviously, for for where we were at that time, we you know skipped second year. I mean, to beat an ACC team, that was that was huge to get start on the year. Yeah, it really was. And um, and then later on that year, you had the opportunity to um, to play in a bowl game as a as a true freshman. Of course, the Papa John's dot com bowl against USF. Yeah, and I, obviously that game didn't turn out, you know, like we had hoped, but you know, the the to get that experience, you know, as a freshman was was great and honestly for I, I it didn't feel like a win cuz we lost, but it it felt like a really good send-off for you know seniors that year who had been there years past and never got a chance to go to a bowl game. So after that 2006 season, after being a key contributor, starting eight ball games, as I mentioned, um, in 2007 you actually redshirted. So, uh, so, so talk about that decision to redshirt after having played as a true freshman. Yeah, it, it was a little weird to redshirt the second year. Um, honestly, I I needed it. God, I mean, that was probably the best thing that could have happened to me. Um, you know, which I, I was glad I was able to start out as a freshman, but you know, really going into that off season, I mean, it was I needed to kind of slow down a little bit, and you know, I also really needed to develop physically as well, because I mean, shoot, I was out there playing with you know some of my baby fat still on me, <laughs> um, but that 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 was huge to be able to take that year and and you know get better at football, but more so you know get better in the weight room as well. And then um, after that 2007 season, uh, that's what you came back your um, sophomore and junior seasons. You started all all 14 games uh, in each of those seasons, uh, both of which ended in Conference USA titles for the Pirates. Uh, so, what are some of your best memories from those years? Uh, can you repeat that for me? Yeah, uh, after that 2007 redshirt season, you came back in 2008 and 2009. And obviously, those years were Conference USA title teams, and you started all all 28 ball games those, those years. So, so talk about that. I, I think there was a transition from your sophomore to junior season, from le- left guard to right guard. Is that is that correct? Yeah, uh, honestly, I can't tell you what year I played what side. <laughs> and that that was part of what was good with uh, you know Coach Shankweiler because I mean, it, and it, I mean it really doesn't matter. I mean a lot of stuff's all the same. Um, you know, being able to flip sides, I mean, that's just, that's just part of, you know, playing football, but, you know, it was huge. I mean, I think our team developed a lot, you know, by that year, and it not not just me with the red shirt, but, you know, we had some other guys, too, like I played beside Sean Allen. I mean, he had, he, he had played and started, you know, as a true freshman, too. He had came a long way, um, and, you know, it's, it's a huge difference with any athletic team when you got guys who are, you know, it's their first year in that strength program, or like that year it was a lot of our, you know, second, third year in that strength program. Um, you know, everyone in that same offense, you know, having all the same coaches, that that always goes a long way. But, you know, the big, the big thing is, you know, from looking back, we didn't, you know, we, we had some guys that are in the league now. We had some guys who were kind of, you know, big deals. But, you know, across the board, we just had really good players in every position. I mean, it wasn't a – I felt like there really wasn't a weakness. Um you know, our, our worst guy wasn't that much of a drop-off from our best guy. 
Yeah, and then for sure. And um, in those 2008 and nine seasons, and really, I mean, your entire time under Coach Holtz and Coach Shank, as I've already mentioned, uh, I thought like there's a real commitment to running the football, something that uh, it seems as though the Pirates are going to get back to under Coach Mike Houston and with Coach Shank returning to coach the offensive line. So talk of, and tell Pirate fans, give us a glimpse behind the scenes and uh, talk about what your uh, typical practice is like. Because I know uh, Coach Rick Smith, um, that's what he was – he was obviously on a couple of other staff at East Carolina following Coach Holtz. And um, when he was on staff, he was the way you need to practice to, to win football games, in his opinion. Yeah, I mean, honestly, we, we approach practice kind of like it was a game. I mean, we're not out there trying to hurt each other, you know, beat the piss out of each other. But at the same note, you know, nobody's – Nobody really took practice as just practice. I think that was something we they kind of grained into us, you know, when we first got there. Um, and you know, a lot of that was honestly at the time I felt like, you know, a lot of times practice was harder than the game. Not in the fact that you're, you know, exerting yourself more, really doing more, but I mean, guys we're going against, you know, are better than who we're going to see in a game. I guess you know, like back then, if I was. If I was lined up against you, know, like Linville Joseph or Jay Ross or something, I mean, I'm not, I'm not going to play anybody the whole season that's as good as these guys. So I think that's really what helped a lot. Um, and you know, that kind of helps with our talent. You know, kind of being spread across the board like that too. But you know, there's, you know, Skip kind of ran a tight ship as well, um, and that was kind of from the top down with the whole coaching staff. I mean, you know, we were out there having a blast, but on the same note. You know, it's it, it's time to get working. You can joke around and have fun all you want, but you know we're gonna make sure we get our work in. You know, in this time we're out here, and I mean, you know, there's a few days when we'd be halfway through practice and he'd car by up and just restart it. <laughs> and speaking of Coach Holt, do um, you have any good stories that you could uh, could share regarding Skip? Um, God, probably. At least for me, probably one of the most memorable ones was a uh, a team meeting. I'm sure it was probably something his dad had uh, you know done back in the day. But I'm wanting to say it was before the uh, either before the Virginia Tech or the West Virginia game. But he uh, he got us in the team meeting and had like this giant ball of yarn. And he had one person grab it and we kind of tossed it around the room. And you you'd say something good about one of your teammates and toss it to them and. You know, by the end, everybody's kind of holding this big web over their heads. And, you know, he, he started talking to us about how, you know, that that's going to be a difference between us winning a ball game that, you know, it's not a, it's not like they're going to out telling us or they're going to do anything special. I mean, it's, it, you know, it's the fact that, you know, we've got people beside us who know, you know, we can trust to do their job and they trust us to do our job. And that's what's going to make the difference in that game. Right. Um, so, in those 2008 and nine seasons, we obviously went to a went to back to back Liberty Bowls against Kentucky and Arkansas. Unfortunately, uh, did not win either of those games. Um, lost a cl- couple of close ball games. Um, but do um, you have anything that you um, kind of really could share with us as far as the bowl experience and and what what that is like? Yeah, I mean, any bowl game you go to, the experience is just, I mean, it's phenomenal. I mean, they, you know, took care of us top notch. Um, and, you know, we're there about a week, maybe a week and a day before the actual game. And, um, you know, the Holt was really good about giving us, I guess, kind of maximizing, you know, what we could do at the bowl, um, you know, and still be able to get in the work we needed to. But, you know, a lot of times, I mean, it'd be, We'd practice that morning, you know, have some meetings that afternoon, and most of the evenings we'd be free. But, um, I mean, it was a blast just because you – pretty much every bowl game we went to, I mean, nobody on the team had been there before. Obviously, we went to, you know, Hawaii in 07. You know, I don't know if anybody on our team had been out there. But, you know, it was great to have that experience. And, I mean, you know, for a lot of guys, it might be the only time they ever go. And really just to – I guess you just to be with your family. Um but even what was it? It was our my senior year, our last bowl game. I mean, shoot, we were there. Um, 
I want to say it was over Christmas. And we had like this huge Christmas dinner with like, I mean, God, it was, it was a lineman's dream. It was like every meat you could ask for was out there. I mean, as much as you could eat. But, you know, I mean, they took care of us really well. And, you know, bowl game was always something special just because it's, I mean, shoot, it's, it's not every day you get to actually, you know, see the cities you play in. Like we might have played, you know, I mean, we played like Houston or UTEP or something like that. We don't really get to see the city. You know, the bowl game is a lot more special because you, you actually get to know where you're at and, you know, kind of, I guess, experience everything, you know, while you're in town. Hey, Corey, it's Kyle. I uh, joined an interview late here. I apologize if this has been asked. Uh, when, when you were here, we had a lot of good uh, running backs, guys like, obviously, Chris Johnson, uh, Dominic Lindsay, Jonathan Williams. Talk about blocking for uh, for different backs and, and you know, uh, what it was like blocking for, for guys with completely different running styles. Yeah, I, it was so much different. <laughs> um, like the big thing with Chris Johnson, I mean, you know, with with him, I mean, get him past the linebackers, he's going to score. I mean, <laughs> and it's crazy if you go back and watch film. I mean, you'll see guys, you know, DBs who have angles on him, and he just outruns them. Um, but, you know, then you got other guys who – and personalities, honestly, they kind of match the uh, running back a little bit too. But you got other guys like Dominique Lindsay, you know, Brandon Simmons, um, you know they're bigger guys. They're gonna they're gonna hit the hole quick. They're gonna muscle through everything, um, it, and it really doesn't change anything for us up front. I mean our job's the same, but you know you get certain teams in certain situations where you're the running backs kind of get you hyped up because I'm like you know with Chris Johnson you can be like yeah I just gotta get this linebacker. I know he's gonna score. Where you know one of the bigger guys they'll be like. You know, we'll watch them truck somebody, and we're out there just happy as we could be. It might be an eight-yard run, but it feels like a touchdown because everybody's screaming in the or in the crowd now. You know? <laughs> yeah, I, I, that's a that's certainly uh, describing Brandon Simmons for sure. <laughs> I would imagine also, uh, you know, we know Brandon really well, and uh, guys, I know Dominic Lindsay here recently. Uh, both guys seem like they would have been great teammates. Oh yeah, they were fantastic teammates. Um, and, you know, that that kind of goes back to what I was saying, too, with everybody knows everybody's going to do their job out there. Um, you know, those guys were, you know, them and the quarterbacks we had while we were there, I mean, they were probably the offensive line's biggest fans. You know, it's the old cliche, we don't get much recognition, but, you know, I could care less when I get a running back who just scored a touchdown, the first guy he runs to is his offensive line. Absolutely. So Kyle and Kyle's talking about, um, obviously, the emphasis on – Running game under Coach Holtz, um, like we had already discussed a, a bit, um, but after that 2009 season, Coach Holtz decided to uh, leave for USF, and then you have um, Pirate alum um, Ruffin McNeil coming in and bringing the air raid under Lincoln Riley with him. And so talk about from going from um, from a predominant running attack like we had under Coach Holtz to the air raid. Uh yeah, I mean it's about as opposite as you can get. Um, so you probably the only further you could get the way is a triple option, but it was it was a really good experience. I mean it was great to get that different perspective too, because not only what we were doing on the field was different. Um, I mean everything was run different, and you know that's not not a good or not a bad thing at all. Um, but it kind of gave me some perspective. Of, you know, hey, there's more than one way to do things. There's more than one way to win football games, and Honestly, it was a blast playing under that offense, as you can imagine. I mean, God, we were scoring left and right. Um, not sure I'd want to be a defensive player in that, you know, style. But, you know, it was just really fun. I mean, and, you know, our coaching staff was completely different. They were much younger. Um, you know, like my the offensive line coach, Brandon Jones, then was – he was a lot more, you know, kind of – I don't want to say laid back, but not quite as – you know, not quite as uh, – old school, I guess. Um, so it was nice to get, you know, some different perspective and, you know, kind of see things different and, you know, win some ball games while we're doing it. Talking about the 2010 season, uh, go back to Ruffin's first game against Tulsa, uh, the Hail Mary and Dowdy Ficklin. Uh, were you on the field for that throw? I was on the field for that throw. Um, Take us back. Didn't quite. Just... Yeah, I mean, it. I mean, shoot, honestly, we weren't doing much because they dropped everybody. <laughs> I was just kind of hanging out up front. Um, but, yeah, I mean, it, it was just really unbelievable. Um, 
you know, and and in that offense too. I mean, we'd only, you know, we only had to give them a few seconds. Something was going to happen. It didn't matter, you know, what kind of pass it was. Um, I mean, you know, we had Dominique back there at quarterback, so we knew he could get in the end zone. Um, so I mean, shoot, if there's honestly, you know, in hindsight, if there's ever a time and a place for that to work, you know, that's that's the guy you want at quarterback, and you know, obviously, that's the guy you want catching it too. He's like six nine. <laughs> Did you uh, did you run to the end zone to celebrate? Like oh everybody? yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, absolutely, yeah, yeah. And we, you know, that was something we did. You know, regardless of who it was or the situation. Obviously, right. that situation makes it a lot better. But you know, that, I mean, it, it really was something memorable for that year. Indeed. That's what. Um, later on that season, that's what I, I thought about this question. This is more from my perspective. Um, that 2010 military bowl um that was a very young bowl game i'm I'm trying to remember if that was the first year of it if not it It was was, well no it was well bubba no it was not the first year of that bowl but yeah i think it was a uh i think it was a new sponsor for that year correct yes before that it was like the eagle bank bowl and that was the first year of it being called the military bowl i believe yeah northrop grumman or whatever yeah but um, but anyway, my question about that was going to be after having been to a a bowl game that was so well established, like the Liberty Bowl in 2008 and 2009, and even the Hawaii Bowl. Obviously, that's going to be fun because you're going to Hawaii. But um, just my impression attending it as a fan, that 2010 Military Bowl was um, I don't know, just not very well run compared to the Liberty Bowl. What was your perspective as a player? Um, honestly, I I didn't think it was. He said he enjoyed the buffet, uh, Bubba. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I actually, um, you know, from our perspective, it was it was as top notch as the others. Um, I mean, the location probably helped with that a lot too. You know, that was the year I was talking about where we had this huge buffet in like a mansion in D.C. and you know, honestly, just getting to see a lot of other stuff down there. But you know that. That that environment was good too. I mean, you know, bowl games are always kind of a fifty fifty split with the fans, so it's it's just chaos nonstop through the whole game. But yeah, that experience was, you know, I, I would say it was on par, you know, with the others. I had no issues with it at all. Um as far as head coach Ruffin McNeil, I know uh, this is something I'm trying to remember, I think I maybe saw you put some thoughts out on social media in the last uh, little while, but um as far as Coach Ruff is concerned, um uh, what are your thoughts on Coach Ruff? Obviously, he had an immense amount of pride for ECU having played for the Pirates back in the, the 70s. Yeah. Um, <laughs> and at the time, you know, when he got let go, I was actually I was coaching myself, and I just hit the road recruiting. Um, and there is a huge amount of ECU alumni who coach high school, you know, in Virginia, North Carolina. And, man, they were pissed. <laughs> yeah. And honestly, rightfully so. Um, cause you know, you look at it, I mean, it's, I mean, he had what the second 10 win season in the school's history, I think. Um, and that was just a year or two before, you know, he got let go. Um, but the big thing is, I mean, you gotta, you gotta kind of understand, I guess the, the culture down there as well. You know, it's not, you know, East Car- Eastern part of North Carolina, there's, there's not much down there. I mean, it's farmland for the most part, you know, it's not like Raleigh or, it wasn't Charlotte for it. It was it was it was political. There 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 was some, oh, there no, was a I'm bunch of people here that, that yeah. Oh, I know, I know. I, oh I, I, yeah, I'm not saying that's the the reason. I'm just saying that's the reason everybody was so pissed because you get a guy like yeah, Ruffin McNeil coming in, and I mean you know he's an East Carolina guy, he's, you know, and it's and he's not something you just let go of, you know. I mean it, you know if if. And the flip side, the flip side is too, and kind of my thoughts on it. I don't know, I don't want to be too blunt, but go ahead. The thing is, if if you're gonna try to bring it, I mean, if they're if the school's goal, if they and like you were saying, it's political, but you know, ultimately, if they're trying to bring in somebody better than Ruff, they need to pay, you know, how, pay the next guy however much they want to win, you know. <laughs> well, you know what? It's not happened. like they're getting rid of him and throwing fifty thousand, you know, fifty million to a coach or something. You know what happened? It was, like you said, a lot of. A lot of a lot of East Carolina alum that were high school coaches were pissed about it. Ruffin McNeil was well liked for the coaching fraternity at the college level, and there was a whole lot of people that told uh, Jeff Comper, "I'm not interested, no thanks." Um, so 
Comper, uh, you know, there's a reason that Comper's not here now and that Cecil State's not here now, and uh, we know what those reasons are. That's because a lot of people like you and me and Bubba and other people were pissed off about what happened with uh, Coach Ruff being fired and then with Scotty Montgomery being brought in. And if you won't say it, I will. Uh, Scotty <laughs> Montgomery was a terrible hire. And um, I think Mike Houston is uh, – have, have you? I don't know if Bubba asked you this. Uh, what are your thoughts on Mike Houston? Uh, he's been very vocal about wanting former players to be involved with the program. I, I have not had the opportunity to meet Coach Houston, um, but everything I know about him, he, I mean, he seems like the exact type of guy you want down East Carolina. Um, I mean, uh, he's just a, I guess he's a a people guy, if that makes sense. Um, you know, he's down to earth. He don't, and he's got a record to back it up. I mean, he's a good coach. There ain't no doubt about that. But, you know, beyond that, I think he seems like someone who's going to be very invested in the fan base and, you know, very invested in his players. Yep. Something else that Coach Houston and his staff are doing an excellent job of, and, and we've had multiple players tell us this, is um, they're reaching out to the football letter winners and, in compiling a database, and they're, and they're going to be reaching out to you guys on a consistent basis, uh, keeping you in the loop, and uh, always having an open door policy. I know Coach Houston, right after he was hired, attended our 1978 40th anniversary uh, reunion for the for the Independence Independent Bowl Champions. champions. And so um, he had the opportunity to actually get on the phone with Pat Dial, which was kind of cool. And um, and and then he made a little speech to the players talking about how they're always welcome at ECU. Yeah, and that's that's great to hear. They've actually have already started, you know, kinda reaching out a lot more. I've kinda seen, you know, I've gotten a lot more contact from them, you know, at least as an organization to alumni, you know, since since he took over. Um but it's great to have that and I mean it's something you need. I mean if you're gonna run any successful program or I mean, you got to have your alumni present. Um, they need to be a part of everything. And, you know, because if you're a player, you know, you want to look to those guys and be like, man, you know, someday when I'm, you know, they won't let me play anymore, you know, hopefully I can at least, you know, come back and be this welcomed and, you know, taken care of like this. And you want guys that have won conference championships in particular around because you guys have got the rings and the trophies to show it can be done in East Carolina. Yeah, that's very true. Um, and, you know, kind of like I was saying at the beginning when I was talking to you guys, I mean, it's, you know, those young players need to understand that it's not just a, you know, it's not just the X's and O's type thing either. I mean, it's, you know, a lot of it goes back to just, you know, trusting each other and a lot of it can be stuff that you do off the field. I mean, I think that, I think sometimes, you know, from outsiders looking in, that's kind of underrated in terms of when you see great teams. I mean, you can have all the talent in the world and the best players, but, you know, if, if none of them really care, it doesn't matter. At the end of the day, you're not going to win. Good point. No doubt about it. Um, and, and, Corey, so as we wrap this thing up, I know, um, obviously, with you being in the car business, and that's something where uh, I'm sure you have to work a decent amount of weekends, but um, hopefully you'll be able to can make it down and watch the Pirates play some in the in the near future. Yeah, I'm already kind of checking my calendar ahead and, you know, figuring out which one I want to go to. I mean, I ain't going to be – I ain't going to let anything stop me from going to a game. I mean, I ain't missed one yet. I've made at least one every year. So, it's just a matter of picking one out. I mean, that opening game with NC State, um, obviously that's one I'd really like to go to. But <laughs> I know they're going to be hyped for that. And – um Oh, absolutely. Um, and like we were talking, actually, before we started the interview, uh, with with you being in the car business um, and with where you're located, and, uh, a lot of pirates in that part of the state. And so go ahead and plug your, your business and, and, and go ahead and give folks your information if you would like so you can go ahead and uh, sell a car. Get, that, get, get that message out there and sell a car. Yeah, yeah, I actually appreciate you giving me the opportunity for that. Um, she don't have a personal website or anything, but, um, you know, I, any new Dodge, Jeep, Ram you want, I can get it for you. I actually have about 200 pre-owns as well. Um, and, you know, I work with all types of people, so, I mean, you know, whatever your situation is. What deal is you at, Corey? Uh, Ashburn Dodge. 
Asheville Dodge. Go see Corey. Mm -hmm. He'll sell you a brand new shiny Ram 1500 Dodge Challenger, Dodge Charger. Uh, you got any Vipers on the lot, uh, of course? That's one thing we don't have. They uh, they actually well, they actually quit making those this past year. Take a little break for a couple of years, but oh really? Okay. Shoot, well, other than that, you want, yeah, you want a Hellcat or something? I can shoot. I can get you whatever you want. Yeah. Well, Corey, um, you've been very generous with your time. We certainly appreciate it, and um, look forward to having you back on the show down the road. And um, take care, you and you and your family there in the Ashboro area, and um, just. That's what we look we look forward to uh, catching back up. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it sounds good, and I really appreciate y'all uh, shoot taking time to talk with me. Yes, sir. Uh, Pirate Nation, that is Corey Dallas from the 2006 to 2010 East Carolina football teams. <laughs> That concludes this edition of 50 Pirates in 50 Days on the Sports Objective. Remember, join us daily between now and game day as we will talk Pirate football with players from various eras. All these interviews are available exclusively on SoundCloud and our YouTube channel. Remember to subscribe and follow so you're alerted when we post new content. Thank you so much for listening, and as always, Go Pirates!